I'm Peter Rogers, and I was attacked by a black rhino. I'm a wildlife vet. Well, uh, that's been my speciality for 32 years now. I had been uh, working in Dubai uh, at, a, at a, a, a nature reserve in, in Dubai and flew back through the night. I was really tired. And when I landed at oh, Tambu, I got this message to phone this client of mine really, really urgently. He says they brought him a black rhino from up north from Ellis Rice Way. And they put it in a boma just so you could acclimatize the previous day. And this rhino was going berserk. There's quite a difference between the black and white rhino uh, in the sense of size. So your white rhino is a lot bigger, uh, almost two tons, and your black rhino about anywhere from 800 kilos to just over a ton. Uh, from a behavioral point of view, um, the white rhino is a lot more docile. In contrast, your black rhino is completely different, a lot more explosive. What he wanted us to do was to dart it um, and then, you know, partially wake it up and then walk it out of the boma through the first quarantine fence, the second quarantine fence, and then let it go. But luckily, he said, uh, look, we've got to dehorn it first because before we release on the reserve, we want to dehorn it anyway because of the poaching problems. The drugs used for uh, knocking down, well, we call it knocking down rhino, get them down. Uh, is uh, an opioid, M99 is the, the common name for it. And then there's usually a sedative uh, with that uh, to make the, it, it a smooth go down and a smooth wake up. So those operations of translocation are used as part of a dewarning operation because you anesthetize it uh, once. And then the process came that we had to now, you know, walk it out of the boma, get it out of the boma. You partially wake it up with a, with a revival, but just not too much to, so that it runs away. But now you must bear in mind that you know, the, the rhino sort of walks you out rather than you walking the rhino out. So you've got to have a rope on the back leg and we've got a rope on the nose, on, you know, behind the horns to lead it. And also the, the back leg, if it starts running, you've got people on it like going to break. And then clots over the eyes, which are taped over the eyes. So because if the rhino can see, that's the end of the road. Eh? And I gave him the complete antidote took off all the, the cloths, because you've got a, you know, a minute or so, took off all the ropes. The animal should be getting up, and if it doesn't get up in the time that you think it should get up, maybe you'll go a lot closer to have a look, because if you need to jump in, you need to jump in quickly. And then I walked back probably about 100 meters, eh, which is usually enough. And uh, then the, the rhino, all of a sudden, and he was sweating a bit, he fell on his side, and he started hyperventilating. I thought, oh, this rhino's going to die. So I walked probably about 30 meters closer, but now I was in the road, and that was probably a mistake. I was in the road. Hop, 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 and this rhino hop. just got up. All I remember is flying through the, through the trees. And then the rhino just carried on running. The rhino was dehorned, so that, that played a role. Uh, and the fact that he was knocked down, so at least he wasn't penetrated by a horn, because the chances are then uh, he, he wouldn't have been in your, your interview. Oh, I lay there too, I got up and everybody was running and they came to me, are you okay, okay? Oh, look at your face, you know, it was all scratched from the thorns and it was blood and come, we must go and wash your face. I said, geez, never mind my face, my back sore, <laughs> my back sore. So after about three or four days, I took myself off for, for x-rays. And there it was, there was a 40% compression fracture of the first lumbar vertebra. He was obviously very tanked up, uh, the rhino. Uh, he's looking for something to hit and knock and then move away. If you're working with black rhino, before you wake them up, you get into a tree. But that day, I, I couldn't do that because I had to take all the stuff off and it was half awake already. Um, so I have been chased by them before, but it's always at a distance and, you know, not nothing that's... I didn't really have time even to react properly. It was all instinctive, but it was just too late. But I wasn't thinking about my own safety. 
I was worried about the rhino. I never dreamed in a million years that it would get up and run straight in my direction. And it certainly refocused me on the things that can go wrong. Because you know, that's how we've worked on thousands, and I've never had even a close shave. And but this was the real McCoy, the proper one. So yeah, it does bring you down to earth. You're not infallible, you're not invincible. And it does, it, it brings that focus back.